because every other year we hear that there's a drought right here in this county and then not too long ago both oil and water discovered beneath these very grounds a lot of issues to discuss about Turkana County and here joining us at the Bishop Mahon Center is a crowd outside another one inside will be joining very shortly and the standard greeting goes something like this a job a job mata mata that's what it is all about. Turkana County, we have a great panel of guests this week. If you want to get in touch, our Twitter handle, at KTN Kenya, at UNDP Kenya, or you can tweet me, at Koinanga Jeff, the hashtag, Sikikasasa. Kwa sababu kama si sasa, amumimalala nyinyi. Before we go inside, let's take a look at the challenges, the problems, the issues affecting the people of Turkana County, here in a package prepared by KTN's Mercy Kandir. Take a look. It stands out, literally, known for the longest time for preserving its rich culture. The vast Turkana County in the recent years has hit headlines. Their dry, arid land sits on Africa's black gold. And more recently, what was called the discovery of life, water, enough to feed the country for an estimated 70 years, the Lotikipi Plains. The discovery of it, however, being a resource of irony. As the perennial drought hits with the visible water scarcity, while the rainy season brings with it devastating flooding. Poor infrastructure continues to be a challenge for Torkana. The deplorable road that leads to the county does not only wear out vehicles but becomes the perfect grounds for highway bandits that, coupled with constant cattle raids, especially along the borders, both local and neighboring countries. <laughs> We have tried to reach our, our neighbors. These are neighbors from uh, Uganda, uh, Southern Sudan, Ethiopia. And as we speak, these corridors have, uh, are now calm. Within Lodwa Town, however, residents can now enjoy Tarmac Road under the new county government, one of the benefits of the In Ghana, na devolution, you may not know Sisi kama wa Turkana tumiapata rasilimali machinani. Pengine watu wenye wako town, ndi wanajueza ki the scarcity of resources tied with the nomadic culture here makes education for these young ones almost impossible education that which would slowly feed some of the problems not available the residents are known for being pastoralist, farming being introduced gradually to the arid area to curb a people that are dependent on food aid. Is there hope with the devolution of the government to the people? With every scorching sunset, can the hope of every Turkana beam with the expectation that the tune will change? And if so, has the county government got its priority right on the first year as the Turkana County government? Masi Kandia KTN, Turkana County. Thank you very much. If you're just joining us right now, this is Siki Kasasa, an initiative of Amkeni Wakenya, UNDP, shown right here live. 
on KTN. We have an SMS line that is 22151. Our Twitter handle at KTN Kenya, at UNDP Kenya. You can tweet me at Koinanga Jeff with the hashtag Sikika Sasa. We are live inside the Bishop Mound Center in downtown Rodwa, Turkana County. And those were the challenges you just saw there in Mercy Kandia's package. We have a crowd here, local folks, waiting to ask questions to a great panelist, great panel we have over here. I'm going to introduce them right now, starting with the governor of Turkana County. Please welcome Governor Josphat Nanok. <laughs> right next to him, representing Tullow Oil, is its community outreach leader. His name is Jackson Nakusa. <laughs> Last but not least, a good friend of mine who is an award-winning international environmentalist. Please welcome Ikal Angele. <laughs> At the end of the day, folks, this is about you, okay? The questions are about you, the issues and the challenges. It's about you, the people of Turkana County. Please ask the questions, and we'll do that very shortly. Before we do that, let me ask, allow me to ask one or two questions. I'll start with you, Governor. By the way, there's a Turkana festival going on right now, and the people are watching us right now live at the Turkana Cultural Festival. So let's say a big hello to the people at the Cultural Festival. Let's give them a round of applause, if we will. Yeah. Yeah. It's the first time you've had this, and I'm, not, I'm sure you're going to have it for many years to come, but my goodness, Governor, you are in the most unenviable position as governor of a county like this. And I say this because one, droughts for decades. Every other year there's a drought declared. This place is dry, it's desolate, it's dusty, and yet you all have discovered oil underneath this ground and water. How does one govern a place like that governor? The challenge is right there. It's a tough task. Your thoughts? Thank you, Jeff. Before I became governor March last year, I was a member of parliament for the Greater Turkana South constituency, which includes the area where Talo has struck oil since uh, last year, uh, uh, the year before last year to date. Uh, essentially, leadership is measured by how much it meets the critical challenges. I took up the role of being the first governor for Turkana County, knowing the challenges that are in front of me. And I have taken it upon myself to steer my people to those emerging challenges, including all the other challenges they have been experiencing ever since our independence. What is it about this county, Governor? I mean, look, yes, people may be asking, are you up to that challenge? Are you up to that challenge? Jeff, yes, I'm up to that. Essentially, we've done a lot to change the face of what is Turkana. What you saw in the festival that began yesterday is one of our flagships programs, which we have agreed with the, our county assembly and the people of this county, and all the leadership, including our members of parliament at the national level. Okay. They call this the cradle of mankind, right, Governor? This is the cradle of mankind, Turkana. Yes, it is. Where man where the Leakeys first found our oldest ancestors. But you know what? It also looks like a place where time seems to have stood still. I land at this, it's not even an airport, it's a strip. And I'm wondering, where am I in Kenya? The people from Nairobi, our crew is asking, Tuko Kenya, Buana. Jeff, I can't agree with you more. This is what Turkana has been. This is the story of Turkana before independence. And this is the story of Turkana the last 51 years before county governments came into place. Essentially, as our other flagship for this county is establishing an international airport here. Because we want to take the opportunity of the various natural resources that have been discovered, including tourism revolving around the cradle of mankind. Yesterday, we watched a film by Dr. Richard Leakey that gives us a trace of how humankind all over the world were once living here and the way they moved to where they are currently. 
And all those traces are done using DNA. And we believe that this process of, of, of revamping infrastructure, the process of uh, uh, putting our culture and making sure that the locals here recognize the Turkana culture and celebrate it all the time, focusing on food security, focusing on health and education, will be the key to remove this county from the bad and negativity that the entire world has viewed it. Mm, I'll let the people ask you more of that, Governor, in a moment. Jackson, Nakusa, let me ask you this. You represent Talo. Talo just discovered its third oil field, I guess if you call it, a, few, a couple of days ago, literally, making it three. I don't know if you guys have a lot of good luck out there or whatever, what it is, but how soon should we expect this stuff to come out of the ground? Thank you, Jeff. Uh, ideally, Talo is still doing the exploration uh, process, trying to measure out and know how much oil is available in Turkana. They're doing wells. They're also doing many, many appraisal wells to support, to check actually how much oil is in. And for that reason, and many other things that are still outstanding, we, you know the challenges of infrastructure, which you already mentioned earlier on. You also know that we may not move oil from here to the next point because we don't have proper, proper means of moving. So those things put together gives Talo and the Kenya government, of course, Kenya government is a very senior partner in this business. Uh, they're thinking about 2017. I'm not really going to say 2017, 2018, mm -hmm. but because of all the things put together, there's still more time. Okay, to so for all, all things being equal, 2017, let's say. Right? I Three years from now. I can't come with that, but we are in the process of trying to look okay. for more in. All right. And, and, the, and, the, and, the, break, the, and the breakdown is what? Kenya government, 75%? On, uh, 25 or on sharing, it still remains the mandate of the Kenya government to put it across through the condition the laws that are available in the country. But what is the breakdown? You should know this. I tell you, it's still within the government to agree. Governor, you know the breakdown? Uh, I think what is in existence now is between the national government through, through the Ministry of Energy and Petroleum, uh, jointly with the investor, which is Talo. They have a production sharing agreement between them. And this was done way back several years before the new constitution was promulgated. What are the numbers? Promulgated. Uh, no, the numbers between the two is a reducing figure. Where the, I think there was an agreement that once oil is discovered, then the sharing will, be, will begin first to offset the operational costs which Talo had used. But over a period of about five years, there is a reduction and the, the government share increases. But I think what is more important here is once the constitution has been promulgated and the articles on natural resources do talk about equitable sharing of resources with communities and with governments. So essentially, what is being debated now, and I believe this is soon going to be going to parliament, is how that portion that national government will receive, how it is going to be shared out equitably with the communities who come from the area where this discovery has been made and with the, the county government. The numbers I'm hearing, Governor, is something like 5% to the community. Is that true? There is a proposal basically on the Mining Act, but oil and gas is excluded from that act. We do hope, however, that a new law to review this outdated uh, petroleum law is going to be enacted. But so far, there are proposals on, on the mining bill that is in front of parliament mm. that indicates a certain percentage of how it will be shared. All right, let me Whether go. that is a figure that will be approved by parliament, yeah. we don't know yet. So you're not ready to commit a number to your people here? Whether it's 5%, whether it's 1%, whether it's... Not yet. Okay. I, I prefer announcing a figure but, that has... But they will benefit efficient. in the end. These people will benefit. Definitely. And I'm the governor to ensure that I've played my role for them to benefit. Ikal Angele, I once lived in a country called Nigeria and often visited a place called the Niger Delta where they first discovered oil. Yeah. And when people talk about oil in Turkana, they say it's either going to go the Nigeria way or the Norway way. Your thoughts as an environmentalist? I think there are two things that we need to take into consideration. Is, um, as we've seen the legislations being passed or being discussed, 
You see the energy legislation, there's a focus on the energy and the petroleum, but it looks like the Environmental Management Coordination Act is, is dragging. And it worries because you see the sense that there's a focus on the energy, but the, the framework to ensure that the oil is done in a proper way is, is lagging behind. Uh, if you look at the land legislations, community land bill is lagging behind, yet this land where the oil is, is community land. So how are you going to compensate people without a framework of compensation? A lot of the people, because he, in, in Turkana the land is seen as um, idle land, and so communities who have been grazing this land have either moved in one direction or another or are being squeezed farther and farther in where, what, what was ideally grazing land. But there's no sense of compensation to that land without a framework. So you're seeing all these different things. We're focusing on the energy, the petroleum and production legislations, but the other legislations that support the industry are all lagging behind. Yeah. But also going back to what the governor is saying, I think we do have in our constitution the Freedom of Information Act, and we need, we need to, you know, access to information. So this, for me, I, in my position, I think the concessions between the industry and the government, we need to start, you know, probing how this information becomes public if we are really interested in access to information for the public. Yeah, governor, what happens to those people who are being displaced? Talo is is cordoning off all its area and people are being moved what's happening to these people jeff so far the access rights we've given to talo to explore are temporary access rights renewed annually it what, is not what, what does that mean so we give them a temporary permit to operate and it's renewed every year basically because we ourselves and the entire country and particularly Turkana county We've been waiting for this new community land legislation. Note that the constitution envisages that within four years, this legislation has to be brought in place. It is the only legislation that has not been enacted of the land legislations. And essentially, it is supposed to guide on how we will utilize our land and how we will be able to apportion land for those who might want to lease it out. Don't you see a clash happening at some point? Don't you see some kind of friction happening? The more you delay, the more it's delayed? It's essentially, uh, right now, we don't have a legislation on how to divide up the land and how to do compensation. There is also a school of thought within this community of Turkana and the leadership that talks of not even getting compensation for the land and then Talo and the national government takes away the land. We are talking of can we hold on to the land as community land, we lease it out so that also we can be able to get equity mm. from the land. Yeah. So, so those are discussions we have not yet finalized internally. It has to be done soon, Governor. And, okay. and I think that's a process sure, we sure. want to embark on now. Okay. I know there are lots of questions, people. This is your forum. I want you to ask the questions, yes? Sir, over there, give us your name. Tell us who, who you are, who you represent, and who the question is to. Keep it short, please. My name is uh, Ekwam Ewoi. I represent uh, CSO, known as Turkana Technical Network. I am posing a question to the Governor. Given that you're leading this county now, there are revenues that um, Talo uh, provides to this county and the national government. But so far, I come from that area where oil has been discovered. But I have not seen what has been received today trickling down to that community. For example, Maram is taken from the local community. The county government is paid uh, revenues, but that does not get back. There is no clear mechanism for plowing that back to that community. Mm. And it has been a contentious issue. The question is this. If today we are not getting uh, revenues coming back, what will happen when there is no framework when we get oil? Good question. Governor. Yeah, Jeff, I think that's a very good and valid question, but I want to clarify it. This financial year, we've got a budget of 12.5 billion shillings. Of this, 300 million shillings is money collected by us from local sources. This includes all the levies we're lifting on transport, on uh, construction materials, and on permits on land and, 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 and other essentials. 
So basically, this money gets to us through a revenue account. We don't touch it. That revenue uh, account, as is required by law, is wired to our central bank account. From the central bank account, we prepare budgets. County assembly approves. I sent them into law. We seek the approval of uh, the control of budgets to release the money based on the budget lines approved by the county assembly. I know it may be a challenge, but the money gets plowed back, but through a certain process that ensures that there is a balance and there is uh, checks and balances in, in terms of utilizing the money. And I think that's how it's been. In terms, uh, second, I know communities around those areas have talked about it. What we intend to lobby our colleagues, my colleagues in the county assembly, is to see how we can be able to adjust within our budgets for those areas where some of the, the, the highest revenues are coming from, particularly those ones relating to the, the oil, and, uh, oil and gas exploration, so that at least we can deliver projects. We don't intend to get money, cash, and give it to people. We want to bring it and they tell us this is our priority and we put the money there okay. for something All that right. is going to be long lasting. Questions, 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 please. Here, young lady over here. Okay, my name is Caroline. Good, good evening. Good evening. I come from Mount Kenya University. I have two questions, one for the environmentalist and the other one for the governor. I want to know, can we, how can we clean the city? I know there is a Taka doing something about it, but the way I've seen the community doing it, burning the garbage, it uh, doesn't help in terms of uh, pollution, the environment. Why don't we adopt uh, what uh, Rwanda does, that every Saturday of the end of every month, we, they close business and they uh, join hands and do what we call Muganda, cleaning the, the city, but not burning the garbage. There is a technology that was adopted and someone won an, an award, a Transform Kenya Award. It was aired on KTN. Why don't we adopt that technology where the garbage can be destroyed in an environmentally friendly way? And maybe we educate also the, public, the community on not burning the garbage. Maybe that would help in terms of environmentalism. I don't know what would be your input on that or what you can help in terms of help, uh, doing that. And then maybe for the governor, the road from... Uh, We've seen it even in the news. Eh? It's a, and I know I'm going to be told it's a national government issue, but who is paying the high price of that road being like that? It is us. If, 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 we, wait, so if we wait for national government, and yet they don't feel like we add any input. As of now, we don't seem to be adding any input into them. That's how they perceive us. We still continue to pay the high price. I don't know what we can do as we wait for them to wake up one day and maybe help us. What can we do as county government? Can we come together? Can you get an alternative form of funding? We make that road. Okay, until Carol, Kitale. we get your point. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Ika Langale, cleaning up the city. I think one of the things we need to recognize is uh, there's this sense of uh, every community initiative where we go out and clean, and we've done that every environmental day, but I think there's some forms of legislations that can be passed. One, um, the county assembly can pass legislation to support, one, waste management. We have a problem with waste management in this county, um, so having some legislation around that, but also between the Ministry of Trade, where the business community is charged to, uh, to have some sort of uh, collection for, for garbage because in the cities you find in Nairobi city people pay a fee for garbage collection and that would create employment for the youth in this county so I think there's a way that we can balance it that allows there's a fee that is paid but at the same time create some employment like what Taka is doing but it, it's not it's not a one-day fix it but also behavioral change there are a lot of the areas the outskirts of Lodwa town that that's the only solution yeah. so it's a way that you integrate local communities and you show them how to use even the home waste to use it for fertilizer. Okay. So it Governor, before you answer that part of the question, uh, I, th I think your Minister for Environment is here. Understand? Can I, can I answer it? But me? your Minister of Environment is here, unless you want to answer it. She's not here, but I can speak on, on behalf of my government. Okay. Uh, essentially, I, I think that's a very good point, very valid. And I would think that if such suggestions will have come much earlier, it will even help us enrich the type of legislation we need to bring to uh, our county assembly. Essentially, Jeff, we have a plan to modernize this town, and I've said it several times. Among us, what we are doing is a modernization of all the urban areas we have here, including Lodwa. 
that program for Lodwa has begun. We've rolled out on the infrastructure. We're doing much more than what you've seen. We've rolled out on a drainage system. We've rolled out on uh, uh, street lighting, which is going to be coming up very soon. How soon, Governor? How soon? How soon? That's what people want to know. How soon can we see change? In a week or two. In a week or two. <laughs> well, that, yeah. I'm saying. You people see, believe this? A week or two, you will have street lights in, Tur in Lodwa. The street lights will be in Lodwa, the, the, the area where we already have. Governor, tarmac. I'm coming back in two weeks for yeah. that. I am coming back. <laughs> James. James, please do come. Come, and you'll find them here. So we don't, we, we, you know, we, 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 we fulfill our promises. Essentially, going back to the point that the lady has raised, we have a team of volunteers, youth and women, who have begun cleaning this town. It is only a matter of how can we be able to help improve? How can the business sector, that is actually the largest producer of waste, be able to contribute to this effort? Mm. So essentially, these ideas we will we will put them into a legislation. In fact, in my table, we have a legislation that has come from the ministry responsible, which we are trying to finalize. So any new ideas, if they are not yet included, we will find ways of how we can be able, mechanisms of how we can be able to include them, so that at least we have a sound law which we can, can be enacted and we can be able to implement it. All right, Governor. Do we have a question from outside? Uh, just grab the mic. Uh, tell us who you are and uh, what's your question, please? can't hear the question. Hmm? Thank okay, you very much. Go. I am Pardon? James Namron. Oh. And uh, I have two questions for the governor. And first of all, I, I want to ask another, two, another one question to the Talo representative. Uh, the question to the Talo representative is just simple. I just want him to tell the public this day how much money in, 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 how much in estimate that Talo Oils gives to the county government of Turkana so they can be able to ascertain and find out, uh, and find out uh, uh, according to what the governor said, that this county is making a budget that needs more money locally. Maybe we have in excess. So we should get to know how much comes from the Talo so that we had with the one we get from the national government and we try to estimate other local uh, income that's coming from within the county, we can know the surplus. <laughs> Two questions for the governor. The question number one, I want to appreciate that the county government of Turkana annually allocates money for youth empowerment and women, millions of money. So we just want to get from the governor how much or how what effect or uh, what impact has this money done to the youths and the women in the last two financial years okay all right young man we've heard you and you, those are two really good questions we're going to get them answered in a moment but we have to take our first break this is siki kasasa coming to you live from the bishop mound center in lordwa turkana county is an initiative of <laughs> Initiative of uh, I'm Kenny Wakenya and UNDP, and we're taking questions from the people of Turkana County. More questions and those answers coming up in a moment.